are we looking at with people that think about for just this example of starting a podcast? Oh, that sounds so cool. You know, let's do it. Like I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. And then they can't get themselves started because the idea behind it, I mean, their why is not strong enough to carry them through the how. Is that what you're referring to? Or is there something else behind that? You're listening to a podcast that encourages you to embrace your vulnerabilities and authentic self. This is your transformation station. And this is your host, Greg Favaza. So it's Lynn. It's Lindsay Lind- Sang. Lind- Lindsay Sang? Yes. Okay. I want to make sure. Do people give you shit for your name? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, they do, actually. <laughs> I figured, you know, like I was in the army, like there's always like somebody commenting something on my last name and it pissed me off, but it was always Farva. When I don't know if you've ever seen Super Troopers, but they would call me that. I'm like, it's fucking Favaza, you jackass. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so no, it, I I used to get like oh, like my name's it's like it's like, oh, hey, this is for Lindsay, and they're like, You're not Lindsay. I'm like, Yeah, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so, that's that's all good, man. Like I wanna just put it out there in the open. It's like, yeah, this guy definitely gets shit. I wanna say something, so <laughs> then our audience knows what's going on here when I put your name out there. So it's it's all all organic, you know, kumbaya kind of who knows. I'm just saying random shit. So you're passionate about visionary leadership and strategic planning. Like, tell me about tell me what a transformation executive coach does. Well, I mean, if you yeah. look at leadership, here's the way I put it. Um, what I want to do is help people become happy at what they do as a leader and also be effective at what they do as a leader. So you really can't be one without the other, right? You can be a very, you know, effective leader that's not happy and that's not going to last long. And it's the same the other way around. Um, So uh, when we're looking at transformation, of course, we're looking for, we're going from A to B, right? Yes. So, I mean, that's completely, at least from a one-on-one coaching sense, it's it's going to be completely dependent on the need of the client. So we could, you know, be flexible in that way. Um, okay. But yeah, more or less, I am trying to develop uh, leaders to become better leaders so that they create happier and more effective workspaces. Interesting. Let me use myself as an example to kind of kick things off a little bit and allow our res- our listeners to resonate from this rather than the opposite. Uh, Right now, I feel like I'm stuck. Like, I feel like every day I'm getting better and better, but I've gone nowhere. And it's the weirdest feeling that I have inside. And I'm sure somebody's listening can relate to this. Like, what would you tell me to start implementing or what I should look at versus what I'm looking at now? Okay, can you give me more details about you know, sure. what you're feeling stuck in? Yeah. So I've been doing this podcast gig for about almost four years now and just started to make money off of it. I've learned everything there is to know. I've had over 128 uh, uh, episodes released. I was featured on Apple Podcast Top 200 in seven countries at one period of time in uh, business news and science. It's great. Um, I was a veteran did five and a half years and got my bachelor's degree in organizational leadership. And what am I doing? Like, I feel like every day is the same, no matter what I do. Is this like something you deal with when you hit age 33 or something? Like, I don't, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, I mean, the first, the first question I would have is basically what's the purpose, right? Like, what are you, What's, what's the what's the vision right yes so um, the, yeah, the i mean the vision is it doesn't align with what it used to align with i mean there's minor kinks in the the adjustment but it was to i mean to grow this show into something and to affect many people as i can i don't care if people like 
if I become famous or not. I don't I don't care about that. What I care about is continuing on this this healthy feeling I get inside when I was a sergeant in the military. I had soldiers below me and when I was their mentor, their dietitian, their therapist, it felt so good to be needed 24/7. I'm like, "Yes, I will guide you, my guys. I will be there no matter what. If you get a DUI, I will be there to bitch out the cop, but I'm also going to bitch you out and then your ass is going to get fucked up for the next like however long this stuff's going to deal with." But it's like I don't know like, does it go, does it get bigger? Does it change into a different form? I just feel like everything's the same. Nothing's happening. Okay. I mean, I think, okay, so here's, well, I want to put it this way, right? Um, the psychological definition of hope is knowing what the end goal is and the goal path I have towards it. Right? Mm-hmm. So when I have, when is when that's getting hazy, when I don't know what my end goal is or how I'm supposed to get there, that's when I would score lower on hope. And that's why I would feel like yeah, I'm just I'm just coasting, right? I don't know, I don't know what that end goal is. Yeah. So that's that's where you know there, uh, there needs to be a little bit more clarity on what this is for. You know, you're doing this podcast, so okay, what is it for? Uh, what's the what's the end goal? It was for me, I mean, to be a public speaker, because I want to do my own TEDx one day and to share what I've been through, because I know it could help a lot of men that have gone through what I have gone through, especially veterans, but also single fathers as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's become a speaker. Yes, but definitely I need, I got to pay the bills too. I mean, single father, so I got to start bringing in income and it's starting to do this, but it's still not quite there. And that's where I, every day feels a little more hazy. Like, thank you. You gave me what I was looking for as far as, trying to create this dialogue here right yeah so what's your ideas you know what, what are you going to do to get towards uh, income producing <laughs> you know with okay. food through, through this through speaking for your your podcast right i mean like dude the ideas like it could it it ranges from i'm very adaptable like i i self-taught myself everything there is to know and then i got um there's like potential opportunities for me to help other podcast hosts to help them. But then it's like, now do I want to sit on the side and watch that go by and do people's work, which I can do a fantastic job, but no, like I did it because I needed to get outside my comfort zone, not to become an expert in creating PNG images that are optimized for SEO and just, I don't know. Definitely. Well, you know, I'm I'm just curious, right? Because you you um you want to be a, a speaker, like, are you doing that right now? Are you speaking? I mean, right now, you and I are having a a conversation. No, yeah. right? I mean, yeah. to me, that takes money, that takes time, and then the yeah. time that I already have is devoted to this. Now, what do I do? Do I just stop doing this and go towards my passion? Well, I mean, if if speaking and making money through speaking is what you're looking for. Right, then you need to figure out if this podcasting is going to lead you to that. Right. I mean, it might be one of the steps because it's giving you some credibility in an audience, right? But yes. when do you capture that and turn it into into speaking, right? So yeah. Yeah. So that that's that's kind of you know um what when you ask the question, like what does a transformational leadership coach does, is you're trying to make this a clearer vision. And once you have a clearer vision, then you need to start putting up priorities and confrontation towards that, right? Um, so uh, I guess we're demonstrating that kind of these, this kind of conversation where I'm, I'm just asking you sharp questions and making making you because I can come in, and this is what consultants do, right? Consultants come into an organization and they say, okay, so based on the research we use, you know, we do some market research, we look around. These are our recommendations. This is what you ought to do, right? Um, and that's uh, that would be slightly different than what coaching does. Because coaching is saying, hey, listen, you're the expert. You know what you want. And you probably have really good ideas. In fact, if I give you ideas, you might not act on them anyways. So I need to ask you the sharp questions so that you are the one that's coming up with the right ideas to move towards. Yes. Okay. So then this brings me to the next question. This is going to be a thinker. 
this moment that I'm explaining to you where I feel like every day is the same. Yes, I need clarity. But what if it's possible that I'm avoiding this uncertainty to reach this max version of what or whom I'm supposed to be? And that's where I'm afraid to take that step versus just creating these excuses and back rationalizing. No, that's not what I need to do. This is what I need to do. But I'm completely avoiding the path that's been set or I have created to its entirety at this mere moment, me explaining this. Yeah. Okay. So we are now touching into some positive psychology uh, realms there. Yes. <laughs> One of the topics I talk about, right, is called uh, how to develop the hero within, right? The H E R O, uh, which is, uh, but, uh, so just, just to give you some background, I'm, a lot of this I'm learning through my, my PhD in organizational psychology. Bitchin', dude. That is awesome. That's literally, I mean, if I were to go to master's route, that literally is going to be the next thing. So that's yeah. the other and, opportunity. And, and so, so, you know, I'm not just pulling this stuff out of thin air. This is well-researched evidence that stuff, right? Uh, so we talked about the, the hope part already, which is the H part of hero, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, what we know about these four different states, their hope, efficacy, resilience, and optimism, okay? is that when you combine them together, they're a higher predictor of positive outcomes than when you just take one out of the other ones. Okay, so they're very interlinked with each other. Mm -hmm. Another really cool thing about them is that you can develop them. So they're not traits of a person, which are usually, you know, if it's a personality trait, you're going to be pretty much the same throughout your life because you're wired to be But in terms of the psychological capital, you can actually develop it. They're states, right? They can go high, they can go low, depending on your situation, but you can work on making them better. So that's what's really neat about them. So you can develop your hope by clarifying your vision, and clarifying your goal tasks, right? Now, it's hard to, uh, you know, still implement, though, if you have low efficacy, low efficacy is my confidence, right? The belief that if I put energy towards something, that a positive outcome will come out of it, right? Yes. And so when that when that is low, you are going to procrastinate. <laughs> yep. Right. Yeah. Um, and so here's here's the deal with uh, developing confidence, though. Um, at least in you know in the psychological world, there's there's three, maybe more than three, but there's three well known ways that are researched um, for doing that. First one is to um, is to do social. Uh, learning so uh you know this is old old stuff and you're like when you watch somebody do something you you start imitating them uh, right okay so so that that one is you know it, it just means that you're surrounding yourself with speakers who are making a lot of money right just so i can uh say in another way this social learning is uh pretty much direct and indirect observation yeah like you you learn by osmosis but you should ask them right like you find speakers who are making money and you say, what are you doing? Right. What, what am I missing? What am I, what, what should I do? Right. And, um, and that would also help you down that track. Right. Um, the, the second thing, and this is more for internal, right. Is that I need to find evidences of my capabilities. So you can, you can write down a list, right. You can journal about that. What have I done that I've achieved and I have, you know, uh, you know, like you just started listening to me about your achievements with the podcast, right? Mm -hmm. So I know that you have the ability to apply yourself, right? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> right? Or to or to see a vision and to push yourself through a couple of years of it. So you have staying power, right? And you need to find that evidence from other people who know you as well, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Or people who've seen you speak, right? So you need to find those people and say, can you endorse me? Can you remind me that I'm good at this? <laughs> You're true. Um, That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's another way to increase your kind of confidence. Um, and the final and most important way to increase confidence is to set challenging goals and achieve them. Okay. Um, so, I mean, we don't have to get into it, but we can, you know, uh, goal setting theory is the hardest theory out there for motivation. Um, and I think it goes beyond just setting smart goals, but that's just one aspect of it. There's yes. Like no, if we can go deeper into it, I would like that for myself. So they would like that for them. Yeah, sure. Um, 
okay, so I mean, you can look this up on the internet, right? But <laughs> so that you can you know backtrack when you heard it once and you're like, that's really cool. I want to apply that. Uh, goal setting theory is um, uh, you know there's five elements of, of really good goal setting. Mm -hmm. First one we already talked touched on is the clarity, of it, right? So yes. smart goals. Most people know what that is, right? You have to have a time bound goal. There's a beginning and an end. Uh, it, is, it has to be quantifiable. Like, can I say I've actually achieved it, right? Um, so those are, um, you know, when you have some of those elements and you're much more likely to go and do that thing, right? The second thing would be that it has to be challenging. And so over and over again um, in the studies, they would show that uh, when you set an easy goal, that people do less, they're less productive than if you set a challenging goal. So challenge, challenging goals uh, propel people, it focuses stuff. How would you justify what is challenging? I'm I'm thinking of like a flow state where we're challenged of four percent above our capabilities. So when you are you referring to that, or like the hardest thing you can think of, but you know you can do it, and you're gonna fucking try. And if you fail, then you do it again until you like more. We gotta go deeper than that. Yeah, I mean you can always back. I mean these are these are flexible, right? So you can rework the goals when you realize, man, this is. This is maybe too hard, right? Then I need to switch back. But um, I would say, put it this way, right? Like, uh, mm, uh, okay. So I I had a client once who who said, you know, he wanted to have a podcast. Yeah. So, yeah. so so he, you know, then I said, all right, let's let's work on the daily, you know, habits, right? We're gonna we're gonna make this a daily thing, you know. You and and, and those are good those are good advice, you know. But it didn't work for him. Um, it, he, he couldn't get into it. And so I said, let's switch this up, right? For this short period of time, for, you know, what would make it super hard for you? I want to, I want to challenge you, set, set a really challenge, right? And so, so that actually propelled him to do something more than just like, let's do easy, but do, you know, uh, I think for long-term consistency, you do need to have those consistent smaller goals that are, yes. that you can just pump out, right? But if that's not motivating you, then you got to set a sprint, right? And, mm -hmm. and that would actually push you forward, uh, at least for that shorter season, right? So are we, are we looking at with people that think about, for just this example of starting a podcast, oh, that sounds so cool, you know, let's do it. Like, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. And then they can't get themselves started because the idea behind it, I mean, their why is not strong enough to carry them through the how. Is that what you're referring to, or is there something else behind that? No, uh, no. So, I mean, I agree with you. I think the why needs to be without the why it won't have staying power. But um, I'm I'm talking about getting it even started, get get moving towards something. It's, it's, if it's too easy of a goal, I you know it doesn't challenge me. It doesn't make me excited about it. But when I'm like, yeah, man, I'm gonna pound out. You know, I have a friend who's doing a hundred videos in a hundred days, right? For for social media. Yeah, and you know it's a scary over you know undertaking, and it's going to push him. But he was like so committed to it because of how challenging it is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it feels like big challenge, big reward kind of kind of thing, right? Um, like I said, it's not sustainable to you know be all a hundred percent you know super challenging all the time. So you might want to set seasons for it, where you're like, okay, this was more of a steady season, but I'm gearing myself up. And I'm going to choose one season where I'm just going to do a huge sprint. And I'm going to do something that's super challenging for me. I'm going to push myself. Right? So that that's more likely to push someone to follow goals than, than uh, an easy goal. Okay. Uh, so that's the only step two, right? That's only two or five elements. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so third one is your commitment, right? Uh, what is my commitment to my goal? Um, so you need to set a higher commitment. And there's different ways to do that, right? Uh, I mean, like, <laughs> I think one of the easiest ways to set a bet, right? So, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just thinking of uh, when I was younger, my friend and I were swimming. We were mm -hmm. playing all sorts of challenges to each other. Like, oh, you know, swim down and see how far you can push that bar, you know, before oh, you come back up. And then time how long we can hold our breaths, right? Oh, yeah. And it was all fun and games until we were like, I bet you 50 cents <laughs> that I can do this longer than you. Right then we super like then we were pushing the limits, right? Uh, so the putting putting some kind of uh, you know reward or loss uh, or 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 you know 
pride, you know, can increase increase your commitment. That's just one of the ways, right? Yeah. Social commitment for sure, right? Mm -hmm. If you let or hold, you know, you, you put it out in the in the you know social media world that I'm going to do this much by this time. Uh keep me accountable or watch me do it, you know, then you're going to probably want to do it because now you've made a promise that you want to fulfill them, right? Mm -hmm. So that's another way to increase your commitment. The fourth thing is feedback. So you need to have some form of feedback loop that you are moving along with your goal. Okay, and that's pretty easy most of the time uh, these days, especially with all this tracking stuff we have, right? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, like, you know. Uh, so when you think of feedback to... loop, are we, are we talking about my own internal thought process? Because it can be like a fucking roller coaster. Oh, you're doing great, Greg. No, you're not. Why are you still asleep? Get the fuck up. You'll yeah, well, let's put, yeah. I mean, let's put it this way, right? Like, let's say, let's say you put your quarterly goals for, you know, I, I want to. Now, I've been doing this in terms of being a guest, right? So it's like, okay, so I want to be on, um, you know, four to six podcasts per month. Uh, so that means this many um, within the three months. Okay, so that's that's what people would call a KPI, right? This is a key performance indicator. Is the yes. outcome? Hell yeah. So people use another thing called the OKR, right? So these are. <laughs> These are these are the these are the objectives. Um, these are these are the process goals, right? So the process goal for me is that I need to send out two emails per day to pitch to people to to get onto their show, right? Yes. Um, so, um, but I, I like when you're talking organizational leadership to me. It's it's getting me excited. Just so you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, but that those those numbers though I can track. I can I can I can tell you clearly. If I was planning to do 60 of those emails in the next two or three months, right, I can tell you week by week how close I'm moving towards that progress. And so if I'm recording that, then I'm having the feedback. Right? Okay. So what if, okay, let's, we say we got the healthy habits down. We, we, we can do the smart goals and we got the healthy habits and we're doing the work, but I, I don't want to lane on disengagement because it's not that. I mean, this is not autopilot kind of work. I mean, utilizing your creative mind to create content and to stimulate something engaging to get people to follow, to listen, is a lot of work. But I feel like there's something that I don't know if I should be cultivating a higher thought process of, like, I see myself as a king. I, I don't know why I'm going to say this, but it, it's just coming to my head right now. I was actually yeah. listening to the laws of 48 power on audible. So it kind of just like having this like thought process as like of what a King would see himself through the crowd. And I, I'm delivering this to my people. This is, is the mindset I need to have because a King will recognize opportunities for his community, for the the village or the, the castle, whatever it will be. And having this like persona is what's going to allow me to recognize opportunities, but see a bigger picture than what I'm just looking at as short terminism versus reality. Hmm. Well, I don't. I don't know. You know, I haven't heard of that perspective before. <laughs> yeah, and I just pulled it out of my ass, like right now. Right, right, right. Like this idea of yeah. like envisioning yourself as this like benefactor. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I. I mean, I when I hear that. I, connecting it to mission, right? So it's like, what is the, you know, uh, what's, what's the, uh, you know, the thing that gives, sets me apart, right? What, what mm -hmm. are the three things that I'm unique at mm -hmm. that when I combine them together, it makes me something special that I can use to bring people, right? Um, and, and that's not easy to come by. I think that takes a little bit of time to, to kind of dig out. Like, I'm just thinking for myself, right? Like I, um, up to this point for my coaching, I've been using other people's material, right? Okay. Which is fine. I can totally use that because they're well thought through and they can help someone get from A to B, which is what I need to do anyways, right? Yeah. Um, but what's going to set me apart from everyone else is if I have my own uniqueness, right? Um, and that's, that's where I'm starting to pull together. Well, you know, I'm a therapist. That's my background. So I have stories from there. Uh, I have my PhD in organizational psychology. I, I really thrive on positive psychology uh, and leadership models, right? Yes. Um, and, and so forth and so on. So, so, those, so 
pulling that together now, I'm starting to pull together my own uh, methodology, um, which I'm going to, um, you know, I'm crafting it right now as we, you know, in this season. So if it's going to be clarified and you're going to have to write a book about it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and, yes. and uh, but when, when I do, and, you know, I go on these podcasts and people are asking me, asking me about it, like, well, what do you do, right? Um, it's going to clarify that for me. And so it's creating a lot of creative juices, you know, it's just making me excited about it. Um, and I think that you probably need something like that when it comes to your speaking, right? Like, like what, like you have lots of knowledge, you've talked to lots of people, uh, but what's, what's the few things that make you unique, right? So anyway, it's just like some food for thought. Right? No, I like that. I mean, I really don't know what I would say. Like if I were to look in the mirror, I would not be able to tell what makes me unique. I mean, I, I don't look yeah. for that when I look at the mirror. I'm like, oh, is there is there like a booger hanging? Like that's kind of what yeah. I look for <clears throat> if I'm looking and into I, the mirror. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. Every every company needs to find that, right? Yes. And there's a process for it. And uh, you are a company, so you need to find that about yourself, right? Um, uh, so, I, I, I mean, this is the classic story. Um, I don't know if you ever read... Um, is one of oh what's his name the guy who wrote the four hour Tim Ferriss. Oh my god, I fucking annoyed at that guy. All right, so this I gotta share this because people will probably be offended. So him and I were actually competing when I had my old red cover art. Him and I literally intersected into Raphonic. Raphonic is this uh, podcast program that puts uh, it shows like the majority of your listeners and what they're listening to besides your show. And it was literally, uh, what is it? Tim Ferriss, like Andrew, Andrew Huberman, uh, Lex Friedman, uh, Rich Roll. And I had this like graph that it created for me. And I'm like, yes, because I like Andrew Huberman and I like uh, Lex. And at first, Tim Ferriss was okay. But then it's always, it doesn't go any deeper because it always just brags about his college education and then, Try and it's just so annoying. And it's just like, dude, shut up and let them talk so they can hear, so we can learn something because I don't want to hear it anymore. So I'm literally against him now. Like, that's <laughs> well, okay. So, I mean, this is this is just one of his books called The Tribe of Mentors, right? And so he just basically interviews a bunch of really great people and asks them about stuff. So that's the whole book. Um, but one of them was the was the you know, the creator of Dilbert, right? Yes. And and he and so this is what he's famous for um, is he talks about the you know he was not the best business person he was not the best artist he was not the best comedian but he was good enough at those three things and what when you put them together that's what made him very unique and that's what Dil where Dilbert came out of right mm. um, and so you kind of have to figure out what those three things are for you right like what are those three things that I'm not like spectacularly unique compared to everyone else but i am unique in it that's unique to me and if i add those three things up then that makes me that makes, gives me a completely unique service or product right or message that i want to craft together for for um you know for my audience and and you know in this industry in the helping industry right mm -hmm. um like we've mentioned in the beginning the whole point is to get someone from point a to b yes right so you you need to figure out for you uh, what is the what is the A to B for your audience, right? Who is your audience and what's their A to B? And if you can figure that out, then you can probably go backwards and and work through how your unique way is going to get them there. I like that. Uh, I have to say something before I continue. I feel like a total dick because literally I'm explaining why I hate Tim Ferriss. And here I am nagging about why I hate this dude who is, li it's, I'm literally doing the exact same thing he's doing, but I'm bitching, but he's talking about his cows. So I had to clear that up, but that that's interesting relating it with our avatar, with our audience and aligning ourselves with the same end goal, because I feel like we should be striving to meet this goal together. I mean, each episode brings us one step closer which is where that transformation comes into play for one hour episode you will become a better version of yourself by the time you're done mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 
so um I mean, let's keep going because I don't want to get off track. But we're <laughs> yes, please. I would like to come back to what you just said, though. Um, yeah, so um, we we were at feedback, so we just had one more element to goal setting, and that the last one is complexity. So your goals, if it's too complex for you, as in you don't understand how to reach it, it is not a good goal. So you have to. You have to switch your goal into a learning goal if you're not there yet. Ooh, go deeper, please. Uh, okay. Um, I mean, let's go back to the podcast example, right? So, if I if my goal, huh, okay, actually, no, you're speaking. My goal is to become a a seven figure speaker. <laughs> that, you know, that's impacting people with my message, and um, and and you know, still make some money to pay for my family. Um, well, that's a, that's a complex. It's not, you know, that's, that's too big of a goal. I mean, it, sh it should be the vision. It should be the end goal, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I, I need to either break that down or, or have a really clear pathway by learning, you know, learning, well, learning from someone who's done it before. That'd be one, one way, right? Yes. Um, that would give me, um, yeah, so so I need to change it to a learning goal first. But maybe for a little while, my goal is not that yet, but is to learn how to get there. So like if we were to sum it up as a definition, what is a learning goal and what is a goal? So nobody gets confused here. Uh, well, I mean, one one is an execution goal and the other is like, learning and innovating goal right okay um, like a trial and tribulation kind of experience sure i mean you you have to have seasons of that in your company right um let me give you a really good example um in apple so apple has very very predictable uh schedules every october you're going to get a launch of their new phone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? And and so what's happening in their company is earlier in the year, all those people who work on iPhones are developing it. They're innovating. They're learning. They're trying to figure out how to put that learning into making this phone a better product, all right, or creating a new line of products. Um, but once October comes around, they're just full on execution. Just full on sales and product, uh, you know, production, right? So you, so you have to. So every every um, every company that becomes long term successful eventually becomes predictable. Okay. In the sense that they have seasons for different things. Yes. How does that translate to a solopreneur, right? Uh, now. And that's where I'm at at the moment. Right? My my goal is to build a team um, so that I could, you know, be practicing what I'm teaching in terms of being a good leader. Mm -hmm. But um, as a solopreneur, though, uh, I have to purposefully set out in my schedule, my year schedule, of when I'm learning, uh, you know, and developing myself and adding those ideas, and when I'm executing, right. So at the moment, I'm in a full execution season. But then by March break, well, that works for me because I'm a dad. Got to stop. Got to stop for a... Uh, sorry, I'm a Canadian, so <laughs> I use March breaks instead of spring break. Holy um, shit. You're Canadian, and then your last name is... is I'm, I don't want to say it. Yeah. Jap Japanese? No, it's Chinese. It's Chinese? Yes. Greg, you're such a jackass. Oh, don't everybody's assume fucking everybody's Japanese. So that's <laughs> so Chinese. So, so that's, and then you're Canadian. Like, how does that happen? How does that happen? I mean, this, <laughs> hearing, I'm sorry. Canada's, <laughs> Canada's receiving like half a million immigrants per year right now. <laughs> but uh, no, there was a huge exodus of uh, Chinese immigrants from Hong Kong back in the 80s. No uh, shit. Because everyone was trying to avoid being under communist rule right mm -hmm. uh, so my parents would have been a part of that and so that's why i was born in canada and 
phrase there, right? That's cool though that you you're sharing that. I like that. I like to understand where people come from if there's a story behind that. I like that. Yeah. So anyways, I think where did we even get how did we even get here? That's the whole, whole that's, thing theory. <laughs> that's the whole point of these shows is I, yeah. I want that response. How the fuck yes. did we get there? <laughs> so okay, I think I know what, what we were we were talking about. So we started off with the vision, right? Mm-hmm. Is that the whole piece? And then I said, "All right, let's bring up the gauntlet. We're gonna have to talk about all four of these: hero, uh, hero hope, efficacy, resilience, optimism." So we've covered two of them so far. That's the hope and efficacy. Piece. Okay. Hell yeah. Then we move on to re- resilience. So resilience is my ability to bounce back from challenges. Okay. So wh- wh- uh, let me just say something: Co- sunk cost fallacy and resilience. When do I know when to stop being hard-headed and walk away? Um, okay, so they're, they're, I, I would say they're different things. Um, I mean, resilient doesn't mean I keep doing whatever I, I'm doing. <laughs> right. True. Um, resilience instead is my ability to discern a difference between what I can't control and what I can and putting my resources towards what I can Say that one more time, please. So I'm putting, I, I'm discerning the difference between what I can't control and what I can control. And then I'm moving my resources towards what, what I can control. That's, at least in my opinion, what resilience. Okay, and, and that's very important. Um, I think we, we are all control freaks. Yeah. So we tend to control things we can't actually control, but those are the things that drive us nuts, <laughs> right? So you need to be able to radically accept the things that I can't control, right? Only then am I freed because I have a limited amount of resources or energy to shift that all towards things I can control. Okay, so um, back to your, you know, the example of becoming a, you know, a, a seven-figure speaker. Okay, so, so, um, yeah, tons of things there you can't control. So many things you can't control. Uh, you know, is there a market for this at this time? Is there, you know, I don't know. Like, you know, there's tons of things. But the more I'm using my energy to think about those things, it's, and it's useless time, right? It's it's, it's spent on 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 fretting on something I can't control anyways. So I need to then look at the opportunities, right? Um, so, you know, as you're talking about the, the whole uh, feeling stuck, I'm just kind of doing the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, no, it's really tough. I mean, I, I understand because I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat right now, right? Like I'm building a, new, I'm building a business, I'm, I'm doing what I think is supposed to work, you know, go on podcasts. So get your name out there. Um, when does this translate to dollars, right? Um, so uh, I guess I guess what I could say is that um, now things take time to develop, obviously. Uh, so you should set um, pilot goals. You know, how long do I do something before I before I know if it's effective or not for the final goal that I'm trying to go for? Okay. Right. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I think, I mean, as far as I know, lots of people do make money on their podcast. <laughs> so, no, that's, I mean, it's definitely, yeah. I mean, yes, yes, uh, it, there's a lot of factors. I mean, you have affiliate marketing, you have uh, advertisements, um, you, you can do subscription based models, and that comes down to refining and refining what the show is about. Is, and then people will see the difference. If it doesn't match up to what you write, nobody wants to listen to that shit. And it has to be the very essence of you. And there's some days when I lose that essence. And when I lose that essence, a little piece of me of what I decided was the vision, it starts to get like a crack. But then when I get yes. my essence back, it doesn't feel like it felt 
the other day. Like I felt a hundred percent. Now I feel 99. And that yes. all it takes is that one. So, up. so, you know, and, and that's, you know, yeah. I mean, this is the plight of an entrepreneur, right? I think that um, is such a, is such a temptation. Um, one of the leadership models that I am following and teaching right now is called the prioritized leader. And so the whole idea is that there are five priorities of the leader and that they have to be in the right order for things to be working. So the, the top, the number one priority is purpose, right? I need to have the purpose, the vision, and the mission in mind, right? Um, because without that, all of the other pieces go into this array, right? The second piece now is people. So is my people on board with the vision and are they being challenged and kept accountable and are they uh, happy? Are they full of good relationships within the group, right? And the third piece is my pace. So we talked about this already in terms of the predictability of my of when we're executing and when we're resting and when we're you know innovating. And so that's the fourth piece as well as so the innovation, right? Uh, or the perception. And then finally, and only at the end, does profit come in? <laughs> because when you have those first four things lined up, the profit follows, right? Um, but the biggest temptation, I think, is to flip that narrative. Yes. Right? Because, I mean, because cash flow is, is, is you know, what we survive on. <laughs> so, so out of fear, oh, man, I'm forgetting about my, you know, like the podcast is great. And the affiliations and all that stuff was great, but it was supposed to be, it was not the end goal. The end goal is the speaking, mm -hmm. right? So, it had, so you have to kind of, you know, step back and think about, okay, what are the missing links here? You know, is there anything I need to do between the podcast to the stage? See, I like these five that you pointed out. I feel like there's something that's missing before you can five these five principles or whatever you want to call that. I forget the, the name of it, this, of this model, but I feel like you have to know yourself. And I mean, everything about you, what you've been through, what is holding you back internally and externally. And when you have gone through all of that, then I feel like those principles would just automatically guide you to success. Yeah. I mean, I, the the model works for the individual for sure mm -hmm. um, because you know it's just like you said you need to know who you need to know what your purpose is right so, yes. so that's that's like the number one even on your on your own right um, especially you know and it's, and that's going to be the case when you're a solo printer and it's going to be the case when you have a team because wherever the leader goes so will we go the rest of the team right. So, so yeah, that's why it is, I mean, and that's, that's what leadership, at least self-leadership is, right? Like it's. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I feel like I'm delayed here for a second. I literally had a moment of just like, not when I, when I say know yourself, I'm saying know like your new, your unique perspective. Like what we talked about on this entire show, like comes down to that moment. What is your unique like style, your approach, your thought process? If you, if it's it's self expiration by affinity, if you can dial it down and get everything down about like what what are your biggest challenges? Like what are you afraid of? What actually gets you excited? What doesn't get you excited? What kind of women do you like? What kind of guys do you like? I mean, it doesn't fucking matter. Once you go through all of that shit, then I feel like those the five principle makes more sense yes okay so i uh, i think here here's a really good ex exercise for that right uh because when you think about your mission it's i provide this so to help this right so um so you really you really need to think about we talked about this one, right my who's my audience and what's their a what's their b right and um and what's my way of bringing them Say that again, the last part. What's, what's your way of what's what? My way? What's my way of bringing them in, right? What's my unique way of bringing them in? What, what unique perspectives do I have that brings them from A to B? Right? Is this rhetorical or is this a direct question? Uh, well, it, I mean, it was a food for thought question, but if you want to think about it now, go for it. 
No, I'll say it out loud. Like if we're since we're it's, it's addressed in the beginning using me as the guinea pig, I would yeah. say literally like I getting them from A to B, I want to I want you guys to grow laughing while growing or vice versa. However, I haven't fi- figured it out yet. But I mean, we could literally Google search everything and try to get information overload. And that shit is boring after a while. I mean, you have to be pretty insane like me to want to go just cruise around Google, try to find something interesting. But if I can put in these little witty comebacks or stupid jokes that might get somebody to crack up or not, I mean, it got you, so it doesn't matter. (laughs) Like this right here. But that's the whole point of your transformation station is to, it's like an intellectual conversation, but it's real moments. I'm talking authenticity about being me. If I'm I'm a fuck up, I'm going to share it. If it's funny, I'm going to try to be funny. If I fail miserably, I'm going to let you know, hey, I failed miserably, by the way, but it don't matter. So you're, you are looking to help people grow laughing along the way. Exactly. Um, and I, I know this is a really broad question, but like, what do you mean by growing? Ooh, yes. <laughs> growing by understanding ourselves. And we don't even know the questions that we should be asking ourselves. We don't know where we should start looking. I mean, if I can give you, give them a template by our conversation for them to start asking questions, well, maybe this conversation didn't resonate. However, it generated questions or food for thought to start addressing in areas around there. Then we're doing something. You know, when my wife and I got married, um, I mean, before that, we were sitting down and writing out a vision board of what our mission is as a couple. I like that. And, yeah, so we just wrote down a bunch of our stories. Right, like what what makes us you know, what makes us feel alive, what what makes us tick, right? And uh, so we came down to one phrase. Now we we are uh, you know, we're we're both Christians, so we're faith based. A lot of our our ideas there, but we're just like you know, it came down to this. We really feel a sense of freedom in uh, you know, in our faith, and so um, our mission is to live in that freedom and bring that freedom to life. That's really all 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 it is, and so. Out of that, though, came different businesses, right? Like my, my counseling business is all about giving people freedom, right? And uh, and then my coaching business is all about bringing leaders to a place where they find happiness and freedom and effectiveness in their leadership so that their followers also get that benefit, right? Um, and so, um, so what's cool here is that two worlds collided because one of them is my own vision what I'm about, um, but that's translated to what my vision is for helping people, right? In terms of their journey, and and there's a there's a level of, and it t- took a long time to clarify, right? Mm-hmm. But I think it's getting more and more to a point where I have some clarity about what that outcome actually is, or how that would feel like, or how, how that would look like. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then once I have that, then it's then it's just a matter of working backwards. Of, of like, okay, then what's the few unique ways that I can help someone towards that, right? And so one of them is, you know, what we discussed here, right? I have this huge propensity for positive psychology. So how do I bring that in into the journey of how it brings someone up, up to that point, right? So I uh, um, I would challenge you uh, to to think about that, right? Like what what is that, you know, growth outcome that I'm looking for for somebody is that, that they don't take themselves as seriously, is that they're more authentic in the way they live. Um, uh, you know, and, and is there a process for that? You know, what, what was the process I went through to get there and what's the process I want to bring you to, you know, help you to bring from, from being a place where I'm just, you know, too serious about everything to the point where I can laugh along the way and feel more authentic and more real as a person, right? So I mean, I'm just throwing out examples from what I'm hearing. But <laughs> yes, no, I like yeah. that. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's wrap up here because yeah. I got another show coming up here in a few minutes. Um, 
how can our audience get in touch with you if they want to know more? Yeah, so my website is happyhires.ca. If you go onto my website, you can do a diagnostic that would give you a quick glance of your priorities of a leader as a leader. And uh, and then that would also lead to you being to book a call with me, right? Or email me. Um, yeah, so those would be the best ways to reach out to me. And if I were to leave you at the floor and you didn't get to say what you wanted to say, here's your time. You can go ahead and share that now. Oh, wow. Uh, what would I tell someone for a concluding? We just went through so much stuff. <laughs> no. yeah. um, I, I would say that, um, yeah, let's begin with what we started off with. It's what's the purpose, right? Um, you know, and that's, that's not anything new. You, know, you hear this, you know, you see Simon Sinek everywhere, right? <laughs> Yeah, talking talking about starting with your why, right? But he's right. <laughs> so, he is. He is. Yeah. So so if that's not clear, then everything else is going to be not clear. Um, and and that's why if you're not clear in that, then talk with somebody that help you clarify that or ask you really short questions to to get to that. Because once that's more clear, then you can set priorities and strategies and behavior behind behind it and actually feel hopeful about it. So that would be it. Beautiful. Beautiful. I like that. Well, Lindsay, I do appreciate you coming on the show today. Yeah, and thank you for having me. Excellent. We're all good. You got everything you wanted to say on there? Yeah, no, that was pretty good. I mean, if I had more time, I would keep going, but I think that um, that would overwhelm someone anyways. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, it I, it's like at the peak of information overload, but not. I mean, we just I just want to give them all the shit that they could literally get an hour versus just scrolling through Google or whatever. And this yeah. is it's fantastic. You did great today, so I really do yeah, appreciate you. Your time. you were a good, good host. Um, yeah, let me let me know in the future if you ever find an opening or someone cancels, just give me an email. In sure. The chat. Yeah. Definitely, I like that. I appreciate you. Okay, appreciate right. you too, man. All right, take it easy. I'll be <laughs> in right, touch. Take care. All right, bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us on this adventure of growth and discovery. If you're ready to achieve a sustainable transformation, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And hey, if you've enjoyed the show and want to support it, take a moment to leave a podcast review on Apple or your favorite podcast platform. Stay connected with us on social media for behind-the-scenes sneak peeks, inspiring quotes, and the latest updates. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Just search for YTS The Podcast. Until next time, remember, change is constant and transformation is inevitable. Embrace the journey and keep rocking your way towards a better you. Stay bold, stay curious. And stay true to yourself. See you next time on your Transformation Station.